Hey, this is Charles with Historical Gaming, and today we're going to take a look at U-Boot, which is a preview copy that I got from Phalanx Games. I'm really excited about this game. It's not a board game, per se. It's more of a simulation. Uh, there's an app that you play against, and uh, there's four different roles that you can take as far as uh, trying to do things inside of the U-Boot. And the app controls basically the ships that you're trying to attack and mines and different events that happen inside the game. So it's a lot of fun. And let's take a look at the game real quick. So taking a quick look at the components, um, what I got may be different from what was actually published, but I have a really nice mat here or a mat uh, that has the uh, different icons associated with the different sections in the game. I've got a 3D laser uh, submarine, uh, which is the U-2 boat, and it's compartmentalized uh, for the different areas where you perform the actions in the game. Uh, on the far side, you'll see a more detailed picture, which you can use without the 3D um, boat, if that happens to be the case. And uh, then you've got the miniatures. So the miniatures have... Uh, different bases and different colors to represent each team. So the captain is blue. All of his guys are blue. And he has different shapes. One to represent the captain, which is the Pentagon. Uh, chief is square. And you'll notice that the uh, mechanics have their own uh, color of brown and different bottoms, bases. Uh, you've got the navigator, who is uh, gray. And uh, he, his responsibilities are a little different from everybody else. Everybody has different roles in the game. Each character has their own icons associated uh, with what they can do that match the ship and where they're supposed to be when they perform that action, such as turning, uh, changing your speed, repairs, and things like that. So everybody has a specific role. And the object of the game is for the captain to tell everybody to move get into position, and then react to different things that are happening inside the ships. There's fires, there's floods, there's mines, there's hull breaches. Uh, when a hull breach happens, the uh, engineer is primarily responsible for putting a puzzle together that is a map of the ship's design. So he's basically going to try to fix these in, in time against the app. So the app is going to run a lot of things that are happening. It's going to say whole breach, and now from that time that puzzle starts, he starts doing the puzzle. He has to solve a portion of it before uh, the whole breach can be fixed. Um, events happen inside the app, and you find uh, enemy ships or uh, ships that you want to destroy inside the app too. So we'll take a look at that here in a second, but overall, that's how it works. you got four different players, and roles can be combined, so you can play solo, two, three, or four players. Uh, roles can be combined, and uh, it's really fun so far. So let's go ahead and start the app and take a look at what's going to happen uh, inside the app. Uh, you're going to press play, and when the menu first pops up, it's going to talk about the um, objectives for this particular scenario. Uh, since this is kind of like in beta or testing, there's only one mission, and basically the mission is to destroy as much uh, merchant ships as possible, and uh, for e the tonnage for each one of the characters uh, is what's going to be your victory objective here. So it gives you the starting location, which is going to be mapped out by the navigator on this map here. We're going to start at AN95, and he's going to decide where do we want to go to and draw a dot on the starting place and a dot on the ending place and kind of measure the angle there so he knows what course to set for the uh, sailing of the ship. So let's go ahead and start the mission. You can see on the top right that there's a clock, and that time is going to tick down as time elapses inside the game. Uh, the first thing the captain is going to do is activate everybody to move, and he's going to pay an action saying basically mobilize. So everybody's going to move from uh, where their current locations are to the place that they need to be. Everybody moves for free. That one action activates everybody. So each player is responsible for finding out what actions that they're specializing in, what needs to be done, and the captain will help them uh, tell what's going on. So the captain might say, okay, everybody mobilize, and I want to uh, change the course of the ship. I want to change the speed of the ship. I want observers on the bridge, and I want to prepare a meal for the day. So the cook has to get his meal prepared, and that's going to be an action for him. He's going to take one of these icons. Uh, and he's got a dinner fork here and a dinner fork here. Make sure his character's there. 
And then when the captain decides to prepare that meal, he's going to pay an action, say, I'm going to pay an action to prepare that meal. And then we're going to put an activated icon here. So you'll see that each one of these guys has uh, three slots. Three slots for activation on the first shift and three slots for activation on the second shift. So when the bell rings twice every day, uh, this card is going to flip and different characters will come in with different specializations. So they might have to move around the board to react to things that are happening in the game. So in the game, we've already started and we've already hit mines and we've already got some things that are happening. We've got a leak in the officer's quarters and we place that leak token uh, in there and advance the morale track by one. So this is the morale track. Anytime this advances, um, we have to take a morale card and look at that damage and apply it to different places. So going back to the captain's activation, he only has so many actions that he can do before the end of the shift, before his um, action marker is reset. Once he gets past the end here, he has to go down here to start using morale. And when he uses that morale, it uh, causes these morale cards to come in. Uh, this is low morale. Well, uh, minimal impact morale medium impact morale, high impact morale, and if you go off the charts, you basically lose the game. So the uh, this is where the uh, hole has been breached through our app just now. This, there's a leak, and the engineer has to assemble that puzzle before we click yes. So he would basically scramble, and he's got exactly whatever time is left on here to uh, fix that. He'll say yes, and so let's keep working on the captain here. So uh, he's got actions that he does. He's activated everybody. That cost him one point. He had the uh, cook prepare a meal. That cost him one point. And we put one activation marker on the cook over here. Right there as far as his activation. We've got three observers on the bridge. So that's going to cost him an action. And then we're going to put three icons over here. Each one representing an action. So the actions for the observers and the engineers are a little different in the fact that they stay observing and the engineers stay working. So as uh, we're doing repairs in the game until the repair is complete, we don't have anything to repair right now to take a look at it. As the repair is being completed, the engineers stay busy uh, with the different levels. So you've got green, yellow, and red representing the different levels of uh, mechanical skill that they're doing. So he's doing a green repair. And these will stay here until he's done. And then when the second shift takes over, these basically are going to move to the other side. Now as the shift changes and this card flips, each guy on the other shift loses a fatigue marker. Um, and uh, that's removed automatically uh, to represent rest. Only one per shift. And when there's a double bell ring, that's a shift change. That means the card flips and the top side becomes active using the same four icons, the same um, four crew figures, uh, but they do have different responsibilities. So it's possible that the captain might have to do another uh, activation for everybody to move uh, in order for those guys to get into the right place. So real quickly looking at the app some more. So the captain would issue an order for everybody to mobilize. Uh, he says, I want to change the course. I want to change the speed. I want to stay at the current depth, so I'm okay there. And I want to make sure my armament's in place. So he'll say, uh, I want to change the speed to full. He'll pay an action for that. All right. So once he pays that action, the first officer will say, is the crew in position? So if the right crew is in position, you only pay one activation to complete that move. So again, going back to the cards, each unit has a special skill that he's good at. If that unit is not in that place, another sailor can do it, but it costs them two activations. And these are kind of like uh, generic application markers here. It will cost them two of those underneath him in order to complete that task. But hopefully everybody uh, knew what the captain wanted to do. They got the crew in the right position, and the crew is in position. You pay one activation for that guy. The next activation is the captain says, I want to have observers on the bridge. So the uh, first, the navigator would make sure 
that he's got his uh, observers on the bridge. And the more observers you have on the bridge, the more you can see the enemy. So now we haven't changed our course yet. So we want to change our course. The captain will say, I would like to change course. And the navigator would relay to the captain uh, what course change uh, he would suggest. And then the uh, first officer is the person who's in charge of the app. And let's say we're going to head on a, a setting of 396 degrees. So that's the crew in position. Uh, the first officer will check the board and make sure that the uh, units that are capable of uh, setting the speed of the ship are in place. And we say OK. And then it just costs us the one activation per person. You can see the time has already rolled to 9 o'clock. Uh, we've had several leaks and several problems. We've hit several mines. Um, things like that are going to happen in the game, and that part is just a lot of fun. So let's look under repair. We still don't have anything to repair at this moment. And we've got another puzzle to solve, so the engineer would be responsible. Basically, we're all waiting for the engineer to uh, complete that puzzle. We can all help him if we want, and uh, we just scramble to try to get that together. There's also different tools you can use in the game. Uh, you can dive. Um, and uh, so in order to dive, you have to have a person capable of performing the dive in the diesel room and in the battery room. So um, the battery's in the back and the diesel's in the front. And you'll have one of those guys capable of doing that in each area. So let's go ahead and change our depth down to 10 or less. And is the crew in position in order to change the depth? We've got one in the front, we've got one in the back. We're okay there. Those guys will pay an action or um, activation token on them. And the, if if they have that capability, two if not, the captain will pay an action for that. And we would dive to periscope level. So periscope allows us to hide, but we're going to be underwater, so we're slower. Uh, the U-boat in general was faster on top of the water instead of below the water. But uh, this allows us to attack and sneak up on people. Uh, ships can see us from seven miles away, and three miles away, uh, they, they can see us with the periscope. So we kind of want to stay at this level here. And uh, let's say we spot an enemy ship. We can click on armament, and we can ask, is the torpedo data computer operator in position? So uh, if not, the captain might have to call an activation for everybody to move. These are the things I want to do. I want to make sure that TDC guy is in place. I want to make sure there's somebody who's ready to fire and reload their torpedo tubes. So we've got the operator in position. Now uh, we've got a fire in the aft section. And we place a fire token, which is here, and the aft, which is in the back. And then probably resolve an event. event, eh, event. All right, so let's uh, do a pretend fire here. So torpedo crew, are they in position? If so, we would pay one uh, activation token for them. And the uh, we're flooding their torpedo tubes and getting ready to fire. We can do multiple torpedoes if we want. Since the guy's already in position, we can do that. And then once we have a target in sight, we can actually press. Let's see if I can see anybody. We can press TDC, and that will uh, decide what target we want to lock on. So there's going to be a point in the game where we come across enemy ships. That's going to show that you have an uh, enemy within a certain uh, distance away. And this is where the navigator's chief responsibility comes in as far as, as, far as calculating where the enemy is, uh, what angle they're uh, going from. And you're going to use one of these. Um, one of these is the U-boat itself. And you're going to set that on the board here to represent the, the U-boat. And then it's going to say contact at uh, 200 degrees or let's say uh, 90 degrees. So let's say we have a contact here and then it'll say the contact's bearing is 360 degrees or zero, right? So he knows we're off to the side. He's gonna use this little calculator and there's some great YouTube videos on how to figure this out to uh, figure out which way we're going, which is uh, let's say we're going north to make it easy. And then the contact course is to our right, 90 degrees, and then we're going to calculate the uh, firing angle that we want to uh, attack on. So the U-boat course is zero. 
So let's say we want to do a, uh, a bearing, and then we're going to change the course of the ship to kind of intercept this guy. And the speed that he's going, this thing is great about uh, figuring that out. So then the captain changes the course, which will cost him an action if the appropriate crew is in place. If not, he might decide to do a, a movement action for everybody. Again, you can see where all these actions are starting to, to pile up on here. And if he gets too many before the shift ends, so I'm not sure if you heard that double bell, that is a shift change. And when the shift change happens, all these cards flip. And then one token from each uh, sailor is removed from the bottom half. And uh, th if they're performing continuous actions, such as observing, these tokens would go up top to represent the second shift uh, doing that. Now, when you hear a triple bell, this one's removed. Um, when you hear a triple bell, that means the captain's action uh, markers are reset back to zero. So that kind of helps him be able to do uh, like a refresh. Everybody's well rested. Everybody uh, is fed. So there is a, a thing in the app that will say, did you feed your crew? So uh, one of the responsibilities of the uh, watch officer's crew the navigator's crew is to feed everybody for the day. So when he gives the action to prepare a meal, you have to select some items here to um, keep morale up. So if there's a lemon out, you have to use lemon as part of your group. If you use three items, uh, it is a plus two in morale. I think if you use, it might be a plus one. Um, but if there's a lemon out, you have to use lemon as part of that combination. Something about preventing scurvy or uh, something about uh, Germans like lemons or something like that. But uh, this is just help a way to help you adjust the morale. The captain also has special cards that help him adjust morale. So he can give out chocolate or beer uh, to, to the guys. He can give out chocolate or beer. Uh, he only has three of these cards to play. Uh, there's a medic. So the medic is part of... Where's the medic? I don't know why I'm missing it. Oh, uh, the medic is part of the petty officer's crew, or the first officer's crew. And uh, he has one medic here who is also the hydrophone operator. And I would like to show you the hydrophone, which is a really cool thing. Uh, going back to the instruments, we've got the battery, which is uh, running now because we are underwater right now. We can use the sextant. If the, the crew was above water and see what section that we're in. So let's go back to instruments and look at the hydrophone. So this is like the precursor to sonar. It is basically an underwater acoustic listening device. And uh, the hydrophone operator is going to look for enemy ships just by spinning this dial. You can go pretty fast. So we don't have any enemy ships in the area here, but if we did, it would show the contact information for this. And uh, I might pause for a second and see if I can find the enemy first. Okay, so we are being attacked now. I'm looking through the uh, periscope. We're on the surface, and I can see some uh, ships here in the distance, and one is coming right at me here. So I might want to uh, change my depth. And again, the captain has to pay for all these orders in order to do this. All right, and then the first thing we we'll probably want to do is change our course to um, no, 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 keep them from finding us. They already know where we are. So we're underwater, and we're going to use the hydrophone. No, no, no. We've got to make sure the hydrophone operator is in position. And then we're going to start using this to find the enemy. I think I turned right, so it's probably... All right, so you can see contact five, contact three. Contact four, bearing 319 degrees, two miles away, 134. So they've already spotted us because we were on the surface of the water. They're already trying to attack us. Uh, their course is 134 and their speed is eight. So this is where the, uh, the navigator will use that dial in order to calculate which direction we should head on the ship. Um, 
this is a really fun game. It's a lot of cool stuff happening, a lot of actions uh, that you can do. Each individual player has their own thing that they need to do. The captain has to maintain composure. You have to uh, issue the right number of orders. Uh, first navigator is supposed to make sure that everybody stays uh, in the right position. So when the captain says, hey, I want to do this certain sort of action, his responsibility is to help guide people and make sure that we have uh, certain people in certain places. The mechanic is in charge of repairs uh, as we get repairs into the game. Uh, we'll assign mechanics to different responsibilities. Red is bad. So we'll assign captain would have to issue an order move, and we got to get five guys down there. Right? You only have, I think, three or four mechanics, so one guy's going to have to take two activations in order to do that. As soon as you uh, put those guys in there, they begin working on it, and it's just basically the time it takes to for them to complete that action. Um, let's go to... Looks like the enemy's found us again. We'll go to periscope depth here. And you can see that guy's headed right for us. So let's turn into him and see what happens here. So, of course... <laughs> I think this guy's going to ram me. I did want to fire the torpedoes at him, but you can see that the uh, torpedoes here, you only have a 30 degree angle left and right um, off the torpedo bow. So we are flooding the torpedoes. And we don't have uh, the angle on him to shoot the torpedo at him. But it is a very cool, very fun game. I hope you get a chance to look at it. It is on Kickstarter as of a couple days ago. I think it's like $65 for the game. Take a look at the components that they're offering online. I really don't know what they're going to be offering, but uh, everything in here seems very um, easy to produce. Uh, the counters, the chips, the, the boards. I'm not sure about the 3D laser thing, but it certainly adds a lot of great effect. And I hope you enjoyed the quick video review demo. There's some better ones out there by Watch It Played. But uh, we played one game with a bunch of people. I played uh, quite a few solo games, and uh, I'm really liking it so far. So take care, and we will see you soon.